chat with Glendora, a show for living right. A chat with Glendora makes your day so bright. Words of inspiration, jokes to make you smile. Come relax and chat with Glendora for a while. I was told yesterday to be less adamant, less definite, more flexible. All right, how is that going to bring back my eyesight? How is that going to bring back the poor leg that I feel so sorry for here that hurts all the time? Or hurts every time you move it? How is that going to heal? And if I had been less adamant and more flexible, wouldn't Albany Med still have the $1,750? Well, Explore it. 30 telephone calls yesterday? Yes. How many all together? 72,560 since 2003. Trying to think if we did anybody any good. Were we a blessing? We'd be a blessing today, won't we, folks? We'd just pour out the love to everybody. Jasper Dog is doing pretty well. He's still wearing his blue sweater. You know, Jasper Dog's no bigger than this. Oh, I tried calling the unemployment offices in Albany, Troy, and Hudson, and told them there was a job available. As I remember it in the old age, 20, 30 years ago, that people used to go down, who were on unemployment, they would go down to the unemployment office and they would hang around. And people would call them up, employers would call them up with jobs to do, and the... Uh, uh, patrons, the unemployment patrons, would go out and do the job for a day and come back, maybe get another one tomorrow. That's the way I remember it. But Albany, oh no, it doesn't work that way. Hudson, please call. Oh, and also in Pittsfield, they didn't even answer the phone. And then in Troy, what happened? Victoria got her second shot for the virus, and both of her arms are very sore. She's tired, but no fever, no stomach ache, and no headache. And I said, a heating pad and go to bed. I should have told her to drink plenty of water. And Corrine is coming today and bring me a vegetarian clam chowder and another vegetarian soup. She asked, which one do you want? And I said, both? Both? Yes. And then she's going to try to help me with the black mold in the shower and try to help me write letters. And those 40 things were behind on the to-do list. Did I tell you yesterday we were reading about Charles Dickens and Compton's Encyclopedia? And he went from one excitement and triumphed to another. And when he came home from his tour of America, uh, he decided, he started editing a magazine. And uh, then he went into playwriting and into play acting. Hello. Hi, Glendora. Victoria. Oh, Victoria, my darling. How are you? Are you feeling better? Yes, I started to feel very achy yesterday, but now I'm back to normal. No, all the way back to normal? I think so, yeah. What does that mean? Back to your own miserable self? <laughs> yes. That's what that means. Okay. 
<laughs> That's my old non eighty stuff. Y yes, okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm on I'm on my way to drop off food in Loudonville and then I'm gonna come to you. So oh, I oh I'm so happy about that. I yeah. last last uh, week it was eleven fifteen. You think that's what it will be? No, it was twelve fifteen. Uh, it'll be before then. Oh, uh huh. I I did all my stuff and uh, I'm just driving from Troy to Loudonville. I'm still in Troy, right near my house. Oh my! Oh, this is great. What good news, honey? I we need you so badly. I, I yeah. know, so that's why I was trying to get her um get over there earlier. Today. Yeah, yes, that was sweet of you. And wouldn't you know you'd do that? You would try to do that. We live, Aww. we have, no, we are, we are a grand universe. All of us together, Vicki, are a grand universe. I love that. Oh, that means a lot. Now, notice as I said to the TV audience just now that we're not saying we have a grand universe, because that makes it look as if we're dots. You know, we're all separate. But we are a grand are. universe. We are, yes. We're one. Oh. Thank you, dear friend. That's perfect. Okay, so I will see you soon. I'm happy of that. Bye-bye. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. What was I trying to tell you? Oh, about Dickens, yes. And then he went into playwriting, then he went into play acting, and he was superb at both of them. So good uh, that one of his performances was before the Queen in the castle or wherever it is. And uh, she asked to see him after the performance, and he declined. He didn't want to go before her in the costume that he was wearing. And he declared. Isn't that interesting? These are all the things we try to find out in the three computers we look into every day. The uh, Encyclopedia Britannica, the World Book Encyclopedia, and the Compton's Encyclopedia. All creatures of our God and King, with up your hearts and let us sing. Just be kind, stop the crow. Oh, cows and pigs, leave them alone. The horses, hens, and turkeys too. Save the fish, one with God. Just be kind, stop the crow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be right with you, folks. Mr. Wayne Collins, thank you for being with us on the second week of February. Can you read us a lovely new Bible passage for the week? Yes, the passage for today is Ephesians 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4, 23. Oh, I want to do that. Say it again, please. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians Four, verse 23. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. Don't you folks? Uh, Wayne, also for the week, do you have a nice new hymn for us? Yes, how about All Creatures of Our God and King? Good one. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and let us sing. Just be kind, stop the cruel, thou cows and pigs leave them alone, the horses, hens and turkeys too, save the fish, one with God, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Uh, let's strengthen our vocabularies. What word do you have today? The word today is ambiguous. What does that mean? It means having two or more possible meanings, not clear, uncertain, or vague. A 
and you need that to run for political office, is that it? <laughs> Possibly. Oh, thank you very much. I'll be back for some jokes. Do you have any jokes for us? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Wayne, can you cue me into some jokes? Yes, politician. Oh, the politician ran in the... He won in the outlying district, folks, because during the campaign he was outlying in all of them. Gator egg. Gator egg, the girl said, is welfare for crocodiles. How does the wife know that her husband loves her? When he refers to her as his first round draft choice. Old quarterbacks. Old quarterbacks never die, folks. They just pass away. Used vehicle. Man bought a used car. He didn't know how old it was, but the odometer was in Roman numerals. Wayne, you were up at 5 o'clock this morning watching a chat with Gondora on Pittsfield Public Access TV. I saw part of the program this morning, and I can tell you a lot about it. Oh, good. Go ahead. All right. You spent a good deal of time talking about Dot Com Cat. This program was from um, it was from July twentieth of two thousand nineteen, and of course, Dot Com had passed away in April of that year. Oh, okay. You told, you told how she'd eat grass and how she had her own personality. Indeed. And um, it was quite a reminiscence. Did it tell you how he ran the house? I believe you did. Yeah, she certainly was the boss of the house. And then you told a lot of your um, signature jokes. You told the one about um, how to make the boss laugh on Monday. How do you make the boss laugh on Monday? You tell him a joke on Friday. <laughs> and then another boss joke that you told was the one where uh, the employee said to the boss, do you think you could promote a man like me? And the boss said, well, maybe if he wasn't too much like you. <laughs> and you told about the young lady who went to the doctor, and he gave his diagnosis and said, you have acute appendicitis. And she said, doctor, I came here to be examined, not to be complimented. <laughs> Good going, way. Now you can remember those jokes. <laughs> and then you said, behind every successful man, there is a proud wife and a flabbergasted mother-in-law. <laughs> All right. And you told the joke about Gator Aid, how the girl thought that Gator Aid was welfare assistance for crocodiles. <laughs> and you told a lot of others, which I can't remember them all. I don't see how you remembered as many. And then what happened? Anything else? No, it stopped when you were telling the jokes. Well, <laughs> that's a good place to stop it. I think that's sweet of you. And then Monday morning, didn't you hear it or something? No, this is Monday morning. Yes. Uh, Saturday morning, you see it at 11.30 a.m., right? Yes. Thank you, Wayne, and thank you, Pittsfield Public Access TV. You're welcome, and you had a, a program on Friday, and in that program, you told 47 jokes. Wow. I and counted you, uh, them. How could you do that, Wayne? How could you well, write down 47 jokes off the TV? A lot of scribbling. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thanks for that, Wayne. What a friend you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, take care. You as well. Uh, it's a very good thing that the Christian Science Monitor is still giving the good side of the news, what is happening in the world, without uh, negative comments about people disliking each other. It's a good thing that they're emphasizing what the news is and just what the news is and not saying this is bad and that's bad and this is ugly. And so Corrine was just reading an article about Joe Biden's climate control bill. What is today? February the 9th, Tuesday, and we have to go to the doctor man, and we have to get the papers ready to put uh, 
forward for a uh, home helper. Then we have to call Sarah and tell her that we've been, and then she'll send the doctor the papers she wants filled out. And we're spiritual. You know when they say we're spiritual, what they're saying is that we're altruistic. We love one another. We don't have anything to do with self. self. What is error? What is error? Error is self. Ego. Me first. Now, what were the good things that happened yesterday? The weather was good. Oh, the weather's been very good. I love the weather in all of its vicissitudes. And let's see what else. Uh, we talked to Dr. Gordon Bermont, a lecturer in psychology at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, he has not received our TV shows for February, March. Uh, I told Gary Jay that uh, how nice he was to step forward and volunteer his services and put in so many hours and that the work that he had done was quite valuable to a chat with Glendora. And uh, its mission, and it was work that moved the uh, details forward. And he says, you're a remarkable woman. And is that good or bad? And then Darlene, uh, she stopped coming also, and she wanted to send me a dinner from the uh, pizza restaurant, either Zier's or Village Pizza, and that did not happen. And the owner of the Goomba's Pizza says, yes, he will house in his refrigerator our vegan cheese, vegan Monterey Jack cheese and vegan mozzarella, though it's too stringy, and vegan uh, cheddar cheese and make our pizzas with that. And there won't be any milk stolen away from a baby calf and the calf put in an enclosure so he can't move and he'll be anemic and make good veal and make... Uh, the veal that people are so callous to eat. Madeline and Andrew are to come at one and drive us to Albany. We have to avoid the capital because of demonstrations. And we go over the Henry Hudson, not the Henry Hudson, but the Henry Johnson Bridge and get to Albany Med. And the first thing that will happen is that I will examine the doctor. Thank you, Corrine, for reading me the Christian Science Monitor, which has a good deal of Christian science in it, but the news is there without the ugliness. Wouldn't it be nice if everybody in Washington no matter what, the only thing that really matters is how did you treat others. Wouldn't that make a big difference? Wayne, we all could use a uplifting Bible passage. Do you have one? Yes, I have. It's Ephesians 4.23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I love it. Again, please. Yes. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4.23. What a big difference that would make to the world, right? Yes. Ephesians 4.23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh, let's see. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your 
hearts and let us sing. Just be kind. Stop the cruel. Thou cows and pigs, leave them alone. The horses, hens, and turkeys too. Save the fish, one with God. Just be kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, St. Francis of Assisi. Now, have you a word? Yes, the vocabulary word today is ambition. And the definition is strong desire for success, fame, power, wealth, etc. The thing so desired. Yes. There is a negative touch in there, and there is a word that will cover ambitious, but it's a word that teaches you ambition in a very positive way to help people instead of you helping yourself. Yeah. And it is, yeah, and it's a word that means uh, uplifting and, and a higher quality. I yeah. can't... I can't ambitious, it says showing great effort, aspiring. Yes, it does. Do you know what that other nice word is? What is that? I can't think of it. It's the same thing. It includes ambitious, but it oh, means ambitious. Um, inspiration? Oh, that is it. Oh, you are smart. That's exactly it. Aspiration is a much better word than ambitious. Yes, because so you're thinking of others. Yes, someone aspires to something. Yes, that's right. Okay, now do we have any jokes? Yes, we have. Politicians, no, teenagers. Teenagers brighten up a room, folks. Teenagers brighten up a house. They never turn off the lights. Baby shoe. Why was the baby shoe crying? His mother was a sneak and his daddy was a loafer. Report card. What does a report card teach a parent? You don't have to lift weights to raise a dumbbell. The man said to his bride-to-be... <laughs> a man said to his bride-to-be, Honey, I know I'm not much to look at. And she says, That's all right, dear. You'll be in the office most of the day. Man in college. Had the women running in circles. Oh, okay. A man was bragging, when I was in college, I had the women running circles around me, and his wife says he was the track coach. Thank you very much, Mr. Wayne, for the You're perk up. Welcome. You're welcome. Uh, folks, here is a, a testimony of healing that I think will encourage you. Uh, this person uh, had such bad arthritis in the hands that uh, the person needed help getting dressed. And then the knees got it, and then the person couldn't walk and couldn't stand up or couldn't go to bed or get up out of bed without help. And uh, the person went to all kinds of resorts where they had special spring waters that were supposed to bring healing, but that didn't work either. And then finally the, this person hired the most expensive uh, physician around and this physician gave the person a uh, very thorough examination and pronounced that it was ossification and it was only going to get worse. And there was no hope of healing it. Well, at that time, somebody told this person about Science and Health with Key to the Scripture by Mary Baker Eddy. And so the person read it just out of curiosity, not thinking it would heal. But as the person continued through the book, there was healing. And there was healing complete. And all of that disability went away. And it never came back again. And that person went on to live a very active and very useful life. Doesn't that cheer you up? You feel so sorry for the person. And then there is a healing. And of course that person is very grateful to Mary Baker Eddy for discovering what heals. What heals is a right relationship with God. What is a right relationship of God? 
helping others. And no selfishness, no egotism, no me first. And realizing that God is everything there is, that God is good. Realizing that we are all one with God. All of us together are one with God. And this person, number one, to a practitioner, the healing was completely accomplished through the reading of the book. And you will find out that in Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy, that all 100 of these beautiful testimonies in that book were brought about by just reading the book. No practitioner. Just by understanding the right relationship with God. Did I leave out anything, Wayne? No, I think you did a very good job. Really? Yes. Oh, thanks. Can we go ahead now and read uh, We Knew Mary Baker Eddy, and we're up to page 421, dear. Okay. It's snowing very hard here. I don't know what it's doing over your way, but Bart's out there blowing out my driveway. Oh, wow. Okay. I hope it doesn't stop the uh, doctor's appointment. No, I'll be interested to see what he says. He'll probably be amazed to see how well you've held up in 92 years. You're going to be disappointed, friends, dear baby friends. It didn't happen yesterday. February the 9th, Susie, we were going to go to the doctor, remember? And we were going to examine the doctor, take his temperature and take his pulse and listen to his chest to see if he paid his medical bills. Well, it didn't happen. Uh... Madeline didn't have the um, foolishness to go out into the snow. She said it was slippery. And there was the news that is going to disappoint you. So listen. You say, you take what God gives you and you say thank you. And there will be plenty of other good days when we can go to the doctor, man. Not that we want to go to the doctor. Oh, that extends our great and wonderful record. Ninety-two and a half years old, no doctors, no medicine. More than ninety-two and a half years old. May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. In January, why, that's, uh, that's nine months. That's 92 and two-thirds year. No doctors and no medicine. So, when is the next appointment? Way into March. March the 3rd at 2.30. 2.30? What about 2.30? 2.30 is when the Chinaman had his dental appointment. 